Hey everyone, join me as we own the George Mitchell Trail in the Woodlands, Texas. So hey, let's head out guys, be safe. Good to see everyone. Gear it up, let's roll. We're following you. Yep. There are 220 miles of paved multi-use trails in the woodlands. Yes, you heard that right. They're used for walking, biking, etc. But there are also a lot of groomed dirt trails for hiking, mountain biking, and the occasional EUC or one wheel. And George Mitchell Park has some of the best around. When you get close to the trailhead on Flint Ridge Drive, you'll notice mountain bikes swarming like bees to the hive entrance. They come here to take on the awesome twists and turn that weave through the forest trails. This time of year the leaves fall like snow in northern climes and they settle across the forest floor like a vast mottled landscape covering every inch as far as you can see. So on the map we're starting out at the trail entrance and then we're hitting south around the outside loop. But then we take a left and we go through some trails out through here which goes basically down towards, I believe, Gosling Road. I like all these bridges that are put through, of course, all these little creeks and tributaries, and but they give you some interesting trail, you know, breaks it up that you can uh, go and these guys are cruising over it. Um, Brent here uh, takes a standard dismount and uh, wait as our guys come across the trails. You know, uh, right behind me here is Gleb. He's only been riding for like a month, and he, but he had a lot of experience with the one wheel, and he really shows what a good transition it can be from one wheel right to an EUC. Now it shows us going further down, all the way as far south as we could till we hit a road, and then coming back up north. And here we are going down through some of these crossings where you drop into a drainage ditch concrete slope is pretty steep, like the slope under a bridge, but there's an adrenaline rush when you get up the other side without wiping out at the bottom and embarrassing yourself. But when you hit water and moss, I found anything can happen, so you definitely have to be cautious. I knew we were coming up on these areas where we had some big kind of technical drops with roots and sideways angles and Gleb, man, he just took off through there. It was awesome. And there Dan's cruising through it on his S18. Uh, here I am cruising through it. <laughs> had to be careful. Easy to uh, catch root or go sideways on that. But what fun trails, man, with some bridges and some other things. Uh, just definitely a, a great great trails and a great day for riding. Uh, Brent, I was, one of my first rides here in the woodlands was with him and Scott cruising around the lakefront and uh, you know uh, they're, they're great guys and he really knows his stuff. We're just watching uh, 
Brent flo float along there. And originally, I thought Brent always had a drink in his hand when he was riding his one wheel because it was part of his style. But then I realized that it had nothing to do with drinking or his laid back attitude. The truth is, he's using the drink like a level to determine exactly when he's too far off kilter and balances back to the center. Kind of like an old school DIY gyroscope with a bubbling level aspect. We're on to you, dude. So sometimes when you come in out after these rains, you get some of these nasty, uh, muddy areas, but that's just part of the territory. We also found this little area that some skaters were obviously building up cement and having some fun on it. Look at Gleb there, going up pretty high, man. And more trails and bridges and just beautiful back here and the weather was great. Um, these are just uh, some beautiful areas that we had to cruise around. As you can see here, the trail follows along the river and you get nice uh, scenic river view as you cruise alongside of it. Another nice little dip. I think we're coming back this time. Not too afraid of the water. And obviously the uh, going up the last part of it there. Mountain bikers can do it too. So actually easier than us in a lot of cases, but yeah. We'd only done about 10 miles, but we dropped off the one wheel guys and wanted to see how far north we could go. We ran into some heavy mud and my wheel got plastered, but this is the Shinko 244, a massive dual sport 3 inch tire. Frankly, it's the best one that you can buy. And look at those teeth just cruising through that forest floor. I mean, nothing gets in its way. It can go over anything. As a matter of fact, I really think I've got to get that tire and put it on my Sherman. It would just make the Sherman a beast. So. Here's to the MSX with the Shinko tire, it's pretty awesome. And definitely can handle the mud or anything that this trail could throw at it for sure. Um, definitely felt solid and stable and with no problems whatsoever. You can see it just ripping it up. Nice drop there. Now we're coming back on that section that we dropped down on the way out, so we're going to have to go up it, and that's a fun little part uh, that we got to come up here. Uh. Oh. Ah. Yeah, nice. Left hand side. Right there, yep, 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 and go straight. There you yeah. go. It's like nothing. All right. There's Dan handling it like a pro. So from there, we kept on going and as far north as we could till we hit the parking lot and then came back. But it was kind of a cool, we did this little side trip where we got a little lost and had to get back on track. But uh, there's some real long single track areas and some um, uh, some other really um, called features coming up which are kind of cool and I think we hit there's a nice long flat spot in here I think we might have hit our top speed on but um, this was definitely uh, on the north side of the trail where we went all the way up and under Kirkendall and kept going and uh, it goes quite a few miles past that uh, before we turned and got all the way to that parking lot at the end and that's as far as it went as far as we could see but great trails and a great great place to ride overall you know I mean we're looking at 20 miles all the way around but um, 
maybe 10 to the south. Oh, look at Glade just hopping over that. That was awesome. He's really got that S18 dialed in. Um, does a great job on it. Oh, here we are to these little bridge uh, features. Caution, the feature, but you come down this steep slope and you drop across and you got this little narrow bridge that you gotta make sure you stay on. But it's kind of fun, definitely. Um, I think there's at least three of these decent uh, little crossings. And uh, we had a blast going on these. And um, just just cruising. And a couple of these spots we get going pretty quick on out here. But then you have the uh, feature in between uh, just to keep things interesting. Yeah, I really love these. Uh, features that they had with the, with the little bridges and I guess they have a lot of these down in Sugarland and so I got to get down there to try them out because uh, it was definitely fun going on these. I had a great time out here. So in the final stretch at the last uh, lap here was myself, Gleb, and Dan because um, we were doing a uh, basically had enough battery there to do the whole mileage and uh, we also went uh, up this one little single track really twisty and turning I didn't get footage of it I thought I recorded the whole thing but it didn't it didn't save so anyway uh, but it was really fun and it practically made us dizzy with how fast the loops were turning through there it was a blast so it's one of the mid trails if you ever come to the George Mitchell and uh, boy it it's like your intestines, it twists all over the place. You feel like you've gone a long way. So anyway, um, hey, great time riding with these guys. Glad uh, you could join with me. And um, uh, here, well, I guess there's our top speed. We came back and around the final part of the loop. You see the twists and turns, but it was fun. Join me next time, and don't forget to like and subscribe.